She's bringing the trailer park lifestyle to the world. Come inside, don't be shy, cause Jolene can't wait to meet ya. She's the queen of the park, she's got gossip news and lots of food to feed ya. Jolene Sugar Baker, Jolene Sugar Baker is one budget-minded girl. Lots of cheap fashion is the passion at the park, the passion at the park, the passion at the park. Dropping in on neighbors is all part of Jolene's world. Slap on all your blue eye shadow. Watch out for that big tornado. Get all filled with pride in the double wide. And welcome to a brand new episode of my cooking show, Cooking with Jolene. I'm Jolene Sugarbaker, and I'm the Trailer Park Queen. I'm undoing years of damage to the Trailer Park lifestyle. You know, we're not all like what you saw on Jerry Springer. Some of us are what I like to call white trash with clay ice. And in my cooking show, I show you how to save on your budget and surprise your guests with inventive ingredient substitutions. In the first episode, I showed you how to make a corn chip pie using a 99 cent bag of corn chips that you picked up at the convenience store. In the second episode, I set the fire alarm off making my famous pickle poppers. You know, I had unexpected guests to my trailer and sometimes you don't have time to think and you've got to throw together something fast. So I showed everyone how to do things with what you've got in your, your cabinets already. And I shared with you my secret dessert using beets. Everyone hates beets. And, you know, I put it in the dessert and no one ever knew the difference. On today's episode, it's all about pie. First off, we're going to make a great entree pie. Now, this is something that is great to throw together at the last minute. It's kind of like a baked spaghetti and it's easy to fix in a jiffy. Then I'm going to show you how to make a pie using raisins. Did you know you can make a pie out of raisins? We're going to find out later. And I'm going to show you how to make a custard cheesecake like pie made out of sauerkraut. Can you believe that? Well stay tuned and I'm going to show you how. Store brand spaghetti. 39 cents. One fourth pound butter. No substitutions allowed. Four eggs. One cup Parmesan cheese. One small container of small curd cottage cheese jar of your favorite spaghetti sauce, one bag mozzarella cheese. You'll need a mixture of spices that are Italian-like, like garlic powder, Italian spice blend from the dollar store, and Montreal steak seasoning. I went ahead and got one of my stovetop bowls that we're going to heat up some water so we can start our noodles in. And you know, this is the only time that you can make sure that the noodles have some salt to them. So go ahead and add some salt, just a little bit to your taste there, because it'll, it'll go into the noodles and it'll just taste so much better that way. And you know, an easy way to keep it from all boiling over is to go ahead and take some oil on a paper towel and run it across the rim right here. And it sort of helps it keep it from just boiling all over. I'm going to go ahead and put the noodles in there. Some of the noodles fell out on top of my stovetop and 
You know, I do keep it sort of clean, but I like to save those and to light my long candles, all I do is take a lighter, light the end of the spaghetti noodle, and you can just go ahead and put that into your candle like that. And you've lit your candle with a spaghetti noodle. Look at that. It looks like our noodles are done here. We're going to go ahead and take them off the stove and drain them. Don't rinse them though. You need them hot. You're going to need a cake pan. We're going to go ahead and get our eggs ready for the spaghetti teeny pie. We're going to get four out. Here, one, two, three. Whoa, they're taking off. Four. Again, I hate getting them in there. I, I always get the shell down there. You can just use the shell of the egg and it just slides right on out of there. Next, we're going to put in our grated Parmesan cheese. You can use about a cup or more, whatever you like. You can put in a cup or whatever you like of the mozzarella cheese, too. One-fourth pound of butter, which is about eight tablespoons. You can melt that quickly in your microwave. At this point, go ahead and add the spices to your liking. Here I'm using the Dollar Store Italian blend. I also like to add some garlic powder to mine. And, of course, some Montreal steak seasoning. Okay, we have put all the cheese, the eggs, and the spices into here and the one-fourth pound of butter and have mixed it around. Now we're going to add our drained noodles. Make sure they're still hot. And we're going to mix it around here so that it's well coated. Okay, we have gotten that all well mixed. Next, you're going to need the cake pan. And you can use some butter flavored spray here, just for sure not to spray it in your face. Spray that down. Then we're going to dump our noodles into the spray down pan. And spread those out into a layer. Okay, I've gotten the noodles all spread out in the bottom of the pan. And we're going to take our jar of spaghetti sauce and we're just going to pour it on top just as easy as pie. I like to use the garden variety of the sauce mix. It just adds a little bit more to this dish. We're going to top this with cottage cheese. It's what I like to call the poor man's ricotta cheese. It's just cheaper and it's usually on sale. You can use the low fat cottage cheese or the high fat cottage cheese or the large curd or the small curd, whichever works for you. Okay, I went ahead and have all the ingredients in the pan and it's ready to put in the oven at 350 degrees for about 20 to 30 minutes. Just keep an eye on it.
And there we have it, my spaghetti teeny pie. Next up, I'm going to show you what to do with that box of raisins that's been in the back of your cabinet with the top open. I'm going to show you how to make it into a great dessert pie. You'll need the following ingredients. Right. pure grape juice, one tablespoon butter, no substitutions, some lemon juice, some sugar too, some ready-made pot crust, some cornstarch, we're going to go ahead and get my royal pie started. And like I said in the ingredients section, all you need is a box of those raisins that are in the back of your cabinet that you have no idea how they got there and why the lid is open. Because we're going to reconstitute these. I think that's the correct word. We need just about a cup of them. We're going to set those aside first and get two cups of the 100% grape juice. We're going to take the grape juice and put that into a saucepan and turn that up on high a little bit, keeping an eye on it so it doesn't do anything scary. And we're going to heat that on up. It looks like our grape juice has started to boil and that's what we need it to do to get it up high and hot. And then we're going to add a cup of raisins. Just stir those around. And you can turn the heat down to about medium here. There we go. And we're going to mix these around for about 10 minutes so they get nice and plump in the grape juice. If you have children, this is a perfect time to get them in on this. Stand in here stirring it around for 10 minutes. I had my daughter Mary Lou just so I didn't have to get a TV with a remote control. I just said, Mary Lou, go turn the, the channel for Mama. And while this is simmering, we're going to put together our pie. Okay, our raisins have been boiling on the stove uh, as a slow boil for probably about 10 minutes now. And they've gotten a little bit more plumper. And we're going to add our extra ingredients to this. You want to put in about a cup of the granulated sugar. One fourth cup of the grape juice again. and some lemon juice. Now we're going to add our cornstarch. You want to be careful with this stuff. You can't just dump this right on in because then it'll just gel on up like preschool paste. So we're just going to put it in a little bit at a time. You can go ahead and mash the little cornstarch little balls that happen up against the side of the bowl and then just mix it all around. You want to continue to simmer this over medium heat until everything is clear and it's starting to thicken up a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and take our raisin mixture and just pour it into the pie shell. Just like that. Wow, that smells really good. It does have a lot of sugar in it, so if you're diabetic, this would probably kill you. So I wouldn't recommend it. And then I just like to top it with another of the pie crust to put on the top. There we go. I'm gonna go. Now 
Now you can get fancy and you can take a fork and go all the way around to make a pretty rim. I just like the pinched effect. Now this pie, we're going to bake it in a hot oven at 450 degrees for about 10 minutes. Then at 375 for 25 to 30 minutes. It sometimes likes to spill over, so the best thing to do is to get a baking pan. Get a baking pan and just take it and put it on the baking pan. So if it happens to have a spillover, it won't catch your trailer kitchen on fire. It'll just fall right on here on the baking pan. So let's go ahead and put this in our oven. You know, my next recipe scares people, and rightfully so. It's made with sauerkraut. Now, you may have only enjoyed sauerkraut on a nice hot dog at the beach, but today, I'm going to make sure that you have it in a different way, and that's in a fancy dessert. Now, it's a custardy, coconutty type pie that I think will fool your guests. Just don't let them know what's in it. So let's go get our ingredients. You'll need a can of drained sauerkraut, some cream, some of your favorite coffee flavored liquor, some vanilla extract. Make sure you get the real kind, not the stuff that's made with chemicals. You'll need some mini marshmallow. And a prepared graham cracker crust. You can find these in the baked good aisle. A half a cup of sugar. I'm going to take three cups of the mini marshmallows and put them in a saucepan. It's okay if some of them slip by to you there. We're going to add to the mini marshmallows with the cream. I'm just going to pour that in there. And we're going to melt down the marshmallows in the cream on medium heat, making sure you don't burn them. Okay, I have melted down the marshmallows in the cream and they're nice and smooth. And I'm going to take and add a half cup of the sugar, a splash of the vanilla, three eggs, A splash of the Kahlua. You can add a little bit more. And stir that around so it's all nice and smooth again. Now be sure not to tell your guests what's in this pie because you'll totally ruin it for them. See if they can guess. And then we're going to add a can of the drained sauerkraut. Next, we're going to take our prepared graham cracker crust and take our mixture and just scoot it in. Now you can add all of it if it fits, or you can make another pie with what's left over. We're going to bake this at 425 degrees Fahrenheit for 10 minutes. Then we're going to reduce the heat to 350 degrees Fahrenheit and continue baking for about 20 minutes. 
or until a knife inserted into the middle of it comes out clean. Be the queen down at the bingo hall parlor with one of my bingo bags. Some of them are in your face, but some of them are nice too. So be sure to check it out at JoleneSugarBaker.com. Our spaghetti tini came out of the pie and it smells really rich with the tomato sauce and the cheese and the dollar store uh, Italian blend. It just has a great, I know that's oregano, garlic, and the tomato sauce on top, the garden style, really adds to it. So we're just going to go ahead and plate some up here. Go ahead, just use a paper plate. And, and the egg has made a nice texture on the outside, almost like a crust or a quiche, if you will. I'll quiche you. Be careful, you've left the noodles long, so it's going to be an experience. You might want to wear one of those bibs that you've ripped off at the Bob's Big Boy or something like that. I like to top it with the sprinkled cheese. And I'm just going to have to taste it now. The tomato just explodes on my mouth, and the cheese, the parmesan, the oregano that was in the spice blend, I'm just going to go ahead and finish this. Next up, we have our royal pie, which was made with those raisins that have been in your cabinet for I don't know how long. We can go ahead and just... Cut that up. It looks really homemade with the, the crust when you pinch it like that. This is great with ice cream or some of your favorite whipped topping. Okay, I have some of the sauerkraut uh, custard pie and I'm going to take a little... Thanks for joining me on Cooking with Jolene today where I showed you how to use that box of raisins that have been in the back of your cabinet for who knows how long with the lid open and how to take those and turn them into a dessert. Then I showed you how to make spaghetti teeny pie. It's a great entree to share with your family when you're rushing home from work. And my sauerkraut custard pie. I know it's scary. Just don't tell your guests what's in it. Tune in next time to Cooking with Joe Lane, and I'll show you how you can fool your guests again. Visit me on the web at JoeLane'sTrailerPark.com. Bye bye. Slap on all your blue eye shadow. Watch out for that big tornado. Get all filled with pride in the double wide.